Hey guys, I'm going to show you guys how to capture lightning. Now in order to capture lightning, you're going to need a few things. First, you're going to need yourself a tripod. Second, you're going to need yourself a camera. And of course, you're going to need yourself. Now I cannot stress it enough. That lightning is very dangerous and you do not want to be out in an open field with this tripod and your nice expensive camera. You're going to want to find a place that is generally under shelter or maybe in your house from a window or under the porch or somewhere. You're going to want to shoot from somewhere that's generally safe. Now I'm no expert with capture and lightning, but I started three years ago and I feel like I've learned a thing or two. The biggest thing that I found was shooting lightning. The first biggest thing whenever I first started was finding the right storm. The second one was finding the correct settings. And ultimately the biggest one of all, the third one, is patience. Now I'm gonna be honest and say most of us who shoot lightning did not start with this. They started with this. Most of us lightning photographers started by just filming lightning whenever, day or night, just filming it. And to be completely honest, that's when I started too. And at that point, it was just as easy as reviewing your footage on your phone and then like screenshotting the image you liked on the video. It was that simple. It was like that, you know. But ultimately, it is really, really hard to get the branches on lightning. Although nighttime lightning is a lot easier to learn than daytime lightning. And whenever I say like daytime lightning, like actually catching it like good. And that is really hard sometimes if you don't know what to do. You're overall going to have a very hard time catching daytime lightning with a camera, like a full camera, and just taking shots. I mean, it's going to be hard that way because you're going to be firing just spraying prey is what they call it. And you don't want to do that for daytime lighting. What you want to do is get yourself a camera that has manual video settings, such as my digital camera right here. Now, with capturing lighting, I started on a phone, but then my aunt gave me a camera. And learning how to capture lightning at night with long exposures is not all that hard for me. You just watch a few YouTube videos, and then, well, you got it, really. Like, with certain F numbers and certain shutter speeds and ISOs, and you get it. But what I have looked for all over the internet is a true way to capture daytime lighting with the branches every time. That's why I made this video. And to prove to you guys that I know how, I'm going to set up this camera on a tripod and I'm going to play a video of lightning on my monitor that there is a almost single frame of lightning going very fast. Therefore, it is going to be very hard to catch if you're not fast enough. And I'm going to prove to you that you can catch the branches every time with a certain trick or and or secret that I'm about to teach you guys. And so the first thing you, you do is you for, don't forget to take your lens cap off. What you want to do is you want to, you want to set your shutter speed at the frame rate. For example, currently 
shooting 4K 30p, 4K 30 FPS. And so what you want to do is you want to set your shutter speed at your frame rate is what you want to do. For example, okay, that's my aperture. And this is my shutter speed. And so you want to put that at 1 30th of a second. And to prove to you guys that this works, I'm going to play the video. And you're going to see the branching pop up on the monitor every single time. And I promise. So what you do is you hit record. Excuse me. And then... And see, whenever I I hit off and I pull it up, see that? I didn't know you could back it up frame by frame on my camera. See the branching. Once you can, once I find it, geez. See the branching; it, it's there. Every time, it's gonna be there, because your shutter speed is at your frame rate, and by doing that, you're making it so there's no interval between the images on the video. It doesn't matter how fast your shutter speed is. The only thing that you need to remember is that there is no interval between the images and by doing that you're increasing your chances of getting the branching and the entire strike all together all right so what you want to do is you want to switch your camera on then if it's got a flip screen i it'd be good for you to pull up the screen and now i'm going to show you what your camera needs to be able to capture lightning is you need a manual movie or video setting. You need this. For example, I have a Lumix FZ300, which has a very good focus, um, which has a very good, um, what is it? Very good manual movie setting. Although, yeah, it, it has a very good manual movie setting. Overall, for capturing lightning in the daytime or altogether, just trying to get the branches on CGs and clad the ground bolts is that just that simple. You sit like you film it, you do it. I just said, and then you put the file on your computer and you extract the frames you like, preferably the ones with the branching. It's literally that simple. For example, what I would do during a storm is I usually start at 1080p 60 FPS, which is what this camera does. And I'd set my shutter at 1 60th of a second, aperture f11, ISO 100. And as it gets dark from the storm, I'd open up my shutter even more and more. Once you get to, down to about 1 24th or 1 20th of a second, start opening up your ISO and aperture too. And another crazy thing, you can actually do this method with phones, as long as, say, your phone has a... A pro video mode like mine does and like I said about shooting the lightning with most devices any device that has control over shutter speed aperture and ISO you can do this method with for example I use my GoPros and for example with my Hero 10 here by the way, it's taped because I don't like having the video reflection off windows at night. Um, the, you can do this with almost any camera with manual video. For example, with my Hero 10 or GoPros all together, you just turn on your Pro Tune mode. And you just say you're shooting at 120 FPS like I would if it was daylight. And you just set your shutter speed at 1 20th of a second. And you'll get them. It doesn't even really matter how fast fast it is, is as long as there's no interval between images even with faster shutter speeds i found you don't get as much partial exposure even 
with faster shutter speeds. It's really weird, but I just notice it. Over time, I have found too that with certain shutter speeds, your branches will be more prominent than others. I've noticed over time anything faster than 1 60th of a second gives you very good branches. Although, if say you're shooting 60 FPS and your shutter is at say 1 1 20th of a second, your, your chances of getting the branching on the strike are significantly lower as the chances which are actually 100% if your shutter speed was 1 60th of a second with 60 FPS. And usually something I've noticed too if you can open up your shutter all the way down to 1 30th of a second during storms, usually your branches will be there. Usually. And the, the faster the shutter speed, the sharper the branches. Something over time too I've noticed is um, anything darker than a two-stop ND filter will completely drown out the branches. Also something that not a lot of people know, if you're filming with your camera and you're trying to set your shutter speed slower than your actual frame rate, whenever you turn it down, it just drops your frame rate that way. For example, if I took my scroll wheel on my camera, and I took it from 1 30th of a second to 1 20th of a second, it would have reduced my frame rate to 20 FPS. Anyway, guys, that's about it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope to see you guys' pictures and them have the branching in them. Anyway, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.